Now the promise of entering into God's rest is still for us today. So we must be extremely careful to ensure that we all embrace the fullness of that promise and not fail to experience it. For we have heard the good news of deliverance just as they did, yet they didn't join their faith with the word. Instead, what they heard didn't affect them deeply, for they doubted. For those of us who believe, faith activates the promise and we experience the realm of confident rest. For he has said, I was grieved with them and made a solemn oath. They will not enter into my rest. God's works have all been completed from the foundation of the world. For it says in the scriptures, And on the seventh day God rested from all his works. And again, as stated before, they will not enter into my rest. Those who have heard the good news of deliverance failed to enter into that realm of faith's rest because of their unbelieving hearts. Yet the fact remains that we still have the opportunity to enter in the faith rest life and experience the fulfillment of the promise. For God still has ordained a day for us to enter into called today. For it was long afterwards that God repeated it in David's words. If only today you would listen to his voice and do not harden your hearts. Now if this promise of rest was fulfilled when Joshua brought the people into the land, God wouldn't have spoken later of another rest yet to come. So we conclude that there is still a full and complete Sabbath rest waiting for believers to experience. As we enter into God's faith rest life, we seize from our own works, just as God celebrates His finished works and rests in them. So then we must be eager to experience this faith rest life so that no one falls short by following the same pattern of doubt and unbelief. For we have the living word of God, which is full of energy, like a two-mouthed sword. It will even penetrate to the very core of our being where soul and spirit, bone and marrow meet. It interprets and reveals the true thoughts and secret motives of our hearts. There is not one person who can hide their thoughts from God, for nothing that we do remains a secret, and nothing created is concealed, but everything is exposed and defenseless before His eyes, to whom we must render an account. So then, we must cling in faith to all we know to be true, for we have a magnificent King Priest, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who rose into the heavenly realm for us and now sympathizes with us in our frailty. He understands humanity, for as a man, our magnificent King Priest was tempted in every way just as we are, and conquered sin. So now we draw near freely and boldly to where grace is enthroned, to receive mercy's kiss and discover the grace.